Um, okay. And again, when I step away, I can't see anything. And it's not because my <laughs> eyes are clearly not great, uh, but it's because the screen is just too far away. And I'm going to walk up again. And hi, my first time, Yasmin Fernandez. Hello, Yasmin. Yasmin, my, la my first name is Fernanda. I like that name. I go by Nan, but it's Fernanda. So Fernandez is a great last name. And um, Barbara Peterson, hello, I'm here. And good evening, Linda, good to see you. Uh, what I don't know, and I don't know if anyone can tell me this, uh, is whether or not we were able to get um, our invitation out in time for the Gosky Center. Uh, the first one that we did, the first big marker presentation that we did, which allows larger numbers, you know, I may have that, I may not be quite accurate with that, but I think I am. Uh, we had the Gosky Center invitation go out, the webinar link go out, and we had a number of people from the Gosky Center. I think we had 50 or 60 people on that uh, Zoom call or, or big marker call. It's just a different platform uh, that allows us some more flexibility and therefore we're using it. In any case, I'm gonna come up and read because I don't hear anyone from the office yet. Hi, Esther, uh, welcome. And there's a guest with a phone number, hello. And um, let's see, Marcel, yes, the invitation is to the Gosky, yes! Uh, 17 people here. Hi, you have 17 people here. Hi, Cheryl, thank you for telling me from the Gosky. Oh, this is going to be a fun time. You know, presenting me to you, basically to the screen, because this interaction isn't active while I cook. It, it would be um, too difficult for me to stay on point. But it's still so much fun to know you're out there and it looks like you're chatting away and I'm loving that. And when, I don't know if Marissa is going to be with us or if it's going to be Angie or who will be with us tonight from Lifestyle Medicine, but I welcome from time to time, maybe a, a, a time of questions that the, the uh, office puts together and that I can answer while I'm stirring or sauteing or something like that. So I'm coming back again. And the reason I'm not changing the camera is that it takes a minute to adjust. Barb and Mac, oh my gosh, you guys, they're in Arizona. They've been gone four months and they've traveled eight days to get back home tomorrow. Marcel Cook, technical problems. Uh-oh, that's not good. Hi, Sherry and Elsinore. Um, We've got 27 so far. That's always fun for me to know how many eyeballs are on this food. Anyway, wouldn't there be an amazing technology that, or wouldn't it be amazing if there was a technology that allowed uh, aromas to come through? <laughs> that would be pretty funny, but you know what? Someday it's gonna happen. You know it is. Oh, I have to begin. Da, 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 da. Hello, everyone, and welcome to um, Recipes for Longevity. I do this because I, as with lifestyle medicine's precepts, believe that long life, vibrant health, balance, and joy come from lifestyle medicine, which means the combination of those four pillars uh, for health which are movement and resilience. That means sleep and meditation and calming our nerves and community, people that gather around us and a purpose for waking up every day. And then the fourth one, of course, is nutrition. And nutrition is what we're talking about today. And it's what I really get off on, as you know. And the nutrition that I focus on is the nutrition that's part of lifestyle, medicines, 
recommendation for good health, and that is as close to or completely plant-based as you can go. And if you're thinking, are you kidding? I can't do that. I've got my kids at home and they wouldn't go with it and my husband wouldn't go with it and I just have to feed them and keep things cohesive. Well, then I'd say just crowd out some of the big chunks of, I was going to call it flesh, I'll just, <laughs> and then I was going to call it stuff, the big <laughs> meaty portions, cut those back and add more plant food. Because the more plant food you eat, the happier your body's going to be. Well, I'll talk a little more about that. You're going to see that I use little to no oil, that I use very little salt. And if AJ's on, she's shaking her head and saying, no, man, no salt. But some people who are very uh, on a rigorous diet to lower blood pressure who have had cardiovascular disease, would be well served having no salt at all. Some have a little with no problem at all, and I add a little. And um, you're going to see that we also add no sugar to anything. If we add something sweet, it's usually date paste, which is dates word up in a blender, combined with their fiber and the enzymes that come in dates and the, the nutrition from a date as opposed to what we are avoiding, which is processed foods. You're going to see some things that are slightly processed here. For example, you're going to see that I'm going to be using dried apples. That's a processed apple, not much. They put it out in the sun. We hope it's the sun as opposed to, nah, it's from New Zealand. I'm sure they've got plenty of sun and they're sun drying, but maybe they're not. But that's slightly processed. The oats began as oat groats, which is a oat berry, a whole oat, and that's been rolled, and so that's slightly processed. We can live with that, but when you get into the packaged stuff with an identifiable ingredients, our bodies don't have any idea what to do with any of that. So before I go on and on and on, because I really could, I'm going to begin with our recipe. This is Chef AJ's recipe. Some of you who aren't familiar or aren't entrenched in the whole food plant-based Philosophy uh, may not know who Chef AJ is. She's a woman who had been a vegan for 40, well, has been a vegan for 43 years. But some of those years, up until the last seven, she admits to have been a junk food vegan. That's why the word vegetarian, the word vegan is meaningless if we're not eating whole plant foods as close to nature as grown. Um, because as she said, I would make dinner a slurpee. There was something else that went along with the Slurpee. I don't think it was an Oreo, but that's that's vegan too. But anyway, um, but now she's a chef. She's been a chef for decades, but now she's a chef to the, <laughs> the stars, the vegan stars, the whole food plant-based stars, and she's very active in so many, I'm going to call it philanthropic things, meaning that she's giving a lot of her time to sharing recipes and ideas on whole food, plant-based, SOS free. And when you hear somebody say SOS free, that means salt, oil, sugar free, period. So today you're getting two of Chef AJ's recipes. And the reason I'm bringing her up besides her deserving the recognition and just go to Chef AJ videos on Google and you can pick her up interviewing people including her conversation with me entitled why I should have a lifestyle medicine doc and you can hear our conversation it was very interesting uh, but she either interviews people or she's doing recipes so I've just dumped in here it looked like I did it willy-nilly but I didn't it was already pre-measured two cups of old-fashioned rolled oats. I don't eat gluten. Some people can do just fine with gluten. As a matter of fact, it's a recommended grain if you can. Uh, I mean, wheat, barley, uh, rye, spelt, those are all glutinous grains. And some people can do fine with them. But if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have uh, some genetic predisposition towards celiac or gluten sensitivity, just don't eat gluten. And there's so many other things that taste delicious. You'll be fine with that. So 
Bob's Red Mill has an old fashioned rolled oat, which is a thicker rolled oat that is also gluten free. I don't usually buy it like this. I usually go to the bin and scoop it out, but it has to be, it has to be rolled oat. It has to be organic. It has to be gluten free. And this is all of them. This is about almost a dollar a pound more than when I get it out of the bin. Um, but sometimes they don't have it in the bin. It sells out uh, actually relatively quickly at Clark's where I shop. It's just near my home. Uh, and uh, Red Mill, uh, Bob's Red Mill is a very good and trusted brand. So I have two cups of oats in my bowl. And if you look at your recipe, we're going to be adding to that six tablespoons of flaxseed ground. You do know that anytime something says flaxseed and the recipe wasn't written in such a way that it's not taking everything for granted. In other words, if it takes everything for granted, oh, these people know what they're going to be called upon to do. They'll just say flaxseed. Don't be fooled by that. It's got to be ground or goes right on through you. Um, and flaxseed is loaded with your omega-3 fats, which are the healthy fats, as opposed to excessive amounts of omega-6s, which then become inflammatory. So we want as many omega-3s as we can get. And a lot of vegans will simply uh, enhance their diet with a tablespoon to two or so of a lot of these seeds like flax, chia, hemp, Hemp's got a lot more at six than three, though, so flax is even better than that. Um, so we add that to add nutrition to this. And then we have a tablespoon of apple pie spice. I don't have to admit anything to you because you're too far away to see it, but I'm going to admit this. This is pumpkin pie spice. That's what I had. Apple pie spice, as the recipe says, if you don't have it, you can substitute some nutmeg and some cinnamon. Well, this is nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, bu -bu 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 -bu, clove, cardamom. Cardamom is that wonderful Indian spice. And I like all of those. So they're going in my apple pie now. I have the triple apple cake, but instead of the apple pie spice. I love this. One day my husband said to me, who doesn't really do a lot of cooking, why don't you separate all your spoons? Because I have three sets of spoons, and when you mess up one, you've got the whole ring that you then have to wash. And I thought, that's impossible. I can't do that. I'm not going to go searching through my drawer for my spoons. And I was watching a cooking demo, and I think it was with, it was with Chef AJ, and the person that was doing the demonstration had a cup of her spoons separated. Now, there's another thing I want to show you about that, and that is the value of different spoons. Do you see that this is elongated? This one's round. My husband says, this one's easier to use. You can scoop it out more easily. But I could never get this in that bowl. I would be pouring, and then what would I do with the overage? Either I have to scoop it up or pour it over something and then funnel it back in, and I don't want to do any of that. So this narrow one, and you can find just about anything I show you on Amazon allows me to go right into the container, shake off the excess. Now, if it were a a um, spice container, an actual spice container, which is what I use, I'll show you one later if I remember to mention the fact that the regular spice containers, when they're storage containers, they usually have a flat edge so that I could have put this in and then slid it right across. I bet I could still nap. Let, I'll leave that alone. Leave it alone, Nan. Okay, tablespoon of, as you can see, it's the pumpkin pie spice, not the um, apple uh, pie spice, but it, it doesn't matter at all. And then I'm adding to that a teaspoon each of baking soda and baking powder. And a lot of people, myself included, prefer to get the brand that are the brands that have no aluminum in them. We don't want any more aluminum in our body than creeps in from drinking things in aluminum cans and cooking with aluminum cookware, etc. So we might as well keep that out. And then a teaspoon of vanilla, liquid vanilla. In AJ's recipe, she calls for a teaspoon of vanilla powder. I don't have vanilla powder. I've not looked for it or bought it. And I believe that she is differentiating because this has alcohol in it which 
I am not going to throw back <laughs> anytime soon <laughs> as a beverage. Um, and I think that's, that's what that is about, but I'm just using a tablespoon. I love this one from Trader Joe's. It's, it's um, organic pure bourbon vanilla extract. Bourbon is an island. I believe it's an island in France off of the coast of France. And it's, it's just a lovely, uh, uh, extract. And did you see, I didn't put it on the oats the way I was or would have with it being a powder and the way I did with the other powders, uh, it would have stuck to a couple of oats and I may not have been able to get it to spread well. So what I did is I put it into the next ingredient, which is the applesauce. Well, it's not quite the next ingredient because my next ingredient is this honey crisp apple. This is a gala apple. You can use a Fuji apple. Honey crisp are delicious. And I know from hearing her demonstrations that Chef AJ is crazy about the honey crisp. That's her favorite. So I bought several apples. The recipe calls for three apples or about three cups. And I found that with the size apples that I was using, one big Fuji, one big honey crisp, that I ended up with three cups and I'm dumping those in. And what I did to slice was that I cut the apple in half, cored it, and then for each half, I cut those halves in half and then did the slices. So they were this size slice instead of uh, the entire long slice. And maybe the recipe or the originator AJ would have preferred a whole slice, but I don't know that. So that's what I did. I made them a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable, figuring that they're going to break apart either way. So, and then the recipe calls for, so what you've seen me do is add the dry ingredients up to the um, vanilla, which I ended up putting in here, the apples, the oats, and the seasonings. You're going to see no sugar in this triple apple cake. Isn't that the neatest thing? And people, this is fantastic. What I'm going to add now is one and a half cups of unsweetened applesauce. Got this from Trader Joe's. I think it was $3, maybe $3.50. And I used it for my first batch of this. We had a little applesauce for something else. Thought I had enough, turned out I didn't. I ran to a nearby store and got another brand that was also organic, Honey Crisp Applesauce, that was $5. So uh, if you're a value shopper, Trader Joe's is the less expensive. And then I found something I wanted to tell you about. I just spent four days with my son's family, six-year-old, well, almost seven and God, 10 days. So seven and 10 year old boys and my son who is a re remarkable cook chef and that's not his job, his occupation, but that's what he does. They live in Palos Verdes and so I spent four days with them and get to use all of his great stuff. And he said, I love these mom. They come stacked, three of them and you could buy a fourth one. And these are by OXO and they are silicone measuring cups. I like a narrow measuring cup. You get a better measure than if you're trying to get a flat line of food in a really wide container. They are pliable, so I can hold them easily. They're silicone as opposed to plastic. So I can put hot beverage in it. I can put this in the microwave and I can heat up let's say syrup for pancakes. I don't do that, but I'm going to say that because there's a small half cup one, half a cup, one cup, two cup. And then I went back onto Amazon and bought the four cup. Their honeycomb, uh, they're made in sort of a honeycomb configuration so that if I heat it, let's say I heat some broth because I wanted it to stir into something that I was making more readily as opposed to throwing it in cold from let's say the refrigerator where I always have broth that I make from scraps. I would be able to pick it up hot because the honeycomb 
will protect, configuration will protect my hands. And then the coolest thing, I, I was sold when I saw this, because there are times where I want to take something and pour it into a narrow container. Like I'll juice a lot of lemons and I want to pour the, the juice into something that, from something that I can squeeze into the small bottle where I keep my lemon juice. And this has that capacity. So I'm going to add one and a half cups of this lovely applesauce. You can make your own. You can buy it. And can you believe that what you're witnessing is an entire cake? We have two cups of organic oats. We have some leavening ingredients. I have, and I wanted to show you this because of the description in the recipe. It called for two ounces, which is approximately a cup, and it was, of dried apples. And don't be annoyed if I keep saying Trader Joe's. It just happens to be close to me. I live in Riverside. I live maybe a mile and a half from Trader Joe's, and I love walking into a store with the back end of it only a few hundred feet away rather than a football field away. And I like the ingredients and they have a lot of, they don't do GMO. And I like their, their food and the prices are great. So these are sweet apple rings. They're not sweetened. They're unsulfured, unsweetened from New Zealand. They were a couple of dollars. And the recipe calls for finely snipped. What does that mean? Okay. Cutco, this is the name of this, of the brand of scissor that I think I've raved about before. You've heard me talk about them. They are insanely, stupidly expensive. I think they're like 80 or $90 for this set. I lost two of them. I'm a gardener. I spend hours out in the garden, and I would silly me bring these out, and if you know anything about trimming plants, Eventually, you put down your cutters. Well, I learned because I bought a holster for the front door, back door, so I'd always have a holster on because I was tired of losing cutters. And you have regular cutters. I didn't need these. But I've thrown two of these away that way, and I still went back and bought the same brand because I've never seen anything that works as well. You can cut a penny with these. Not that anybody would care to do that, but that's the way it is. So the recipe says add two ounces which is about a cup and that's exactly what it was it was a cup of snipped apples and just let me show you what that looks like it was a cup okay and to snip them i simply add made a a, um, a little pile of them and just cut through the pile and snipped this way. When I tried to cut them with conventional scissors in a conventional way, I found that they sort of stuck together. And I wasn't crazy about that. So the other thing that's going to happen, and I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but I'm going to keep a couple of these out. Because if you look carefully, and you can go to the photos on your invitation to this webinar and spread the photo and look at them more carefully and you can look at the apple cake, it's so gorgeous, you're going to see that there are apple rings on top. I eked those out of the batter to create a display of sliced apples and I'm going to save this for exactly that. And so I'm mixing now the only thing that goes into this cake, and you're going to think that's impossible. How could oats, applesauce, whole sliced apple, a couple of leavenings, and a little bit of seasoning, and that teeny bit of vanilla, make a delicious cake? Trust me, it does. Absolutely delicious. Best if refrigerated, and best if eaten an hour or so, I found so was even better, meaning even more than an hour after baking, because it needs to cool, and you certainly aren't going to put something hot in your refrigerator. It changes the temperature and raises the temperature inside and makes things that were supposed to last a certain amount of time last less time by raising the temperature. Okay, and then I'm going to show you another thing. Oh, 
AJ doesn't eat nuts. I love nuts and I eat them uh, in a conservative way. My goal is no more than an ounce a day because they're very high calorie. An ounce is 200, and, well, anywhere from 180 to 220 calories, depending on what kind. I like them for their omega 3s. I like them as a snack. They fill me up. And if I ever find that, oops, the scale's going higher, uh, I cut the nuts first because that's the, the highest fat of anything that I eat, but I can eat them and I can do just fine. And, and um, in a way, that's how my husband holds on to his weight with a whole food plant base, no oil regime. We get healthier and yet we find that we have to eat a little more just to keep the weight on. So I have a third of a cup of chopped pecans that are gonna go in here because I happen to love the texture of crunch in any kind of a baked good. So I'm mixing it well. And if you're wondering about this spatula I'm using, it's by Trivoli, Trivoli, and they have them on Amazon and they have several configurations, not terribly expensive, but they're silicone. And that's the point I was making about silicone earlier. You can put hot food in silicone, my microwave when I have something I'm warming, I prefer not to cook in the microwave, but I will rewarm something. I'll put a silicone cylinder that you can buy as a, uh, to keep heat in when you're trying to microwave, because never, 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 never uh, heat anything in plastic and don't even put plastic wrap to contain the steam because you're still leaching out the polycarbonates or the, the, it's a petroleum product and you just don't want any of that stuff in your food. So, but silicone is not that way. Silicone has been shown to be, I'll use the word inert. And okay, so I'm gonna be baking this at 350 for 30 minutes. This is, and I buy it from Kirkland because you can get it at a, better price than if you buy it, for example, at Clark's where you get 10 foot of it for $5. This is parchment paper. I don't remember what it costs at Costco, but I do believe it's, is, is Kirkland? Yeah, that's Costco, right? As opposed to Smart and Final, yeah. It's, it's maybe $8 or something and you get a huge roll. And instead of putting things on aluminum foil, again, aluminum, just use parchment if you can. Okay, and I'm laying that down at the base of the pan. Oh, where am I? There, at the base of the pan. So that, and I just wanted to show you how you can measure it off, and then I just slice that in half with paper. I'm not throwing this away. I'll use this for any number of things. I have a small Breville hot air oven, and I'll put potatoes, little smashed boiled potatoes, in the air fry setting for lunch and end up with these little crunchy potatoes and I just lay them on that in my air fry basket. Okay, so this goes into the pan. You can see how kind of crumbly it is because it's, let me show you. Oh, people, this smells so good with all those spices that were in the pumpkin pie spice mix. And again, apple pie, pie spice mix or making your own spice mix will be just fine. The spatulas, because they're silicone and they're very pliable, they're sturdy on the inside, but very pliable, just scrape up everything very well and yet they're strong enough to press things. Which is what we're gonna do. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to give myself a dry cloth. All right. So I'm going to, you know what? Yeah, there. I'm pressing it in, trying not to beat it to death. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to walk out of here for just a second. 
I always have these gloves. I'm not allergic to latex, so I'll do latex. You may be allergic to latex and want to use something else. Oh, I should put it on my left hand because that's what I am, left-handed. And I did, when I made this last time, I pressed. And it takes a little bit of pressing, I think, just to get it situated well. Um, so, when you have these latex gloves, what's the value of having them in your kitchen considering you're buying, if you get them, for example, at Smart and Final, you're buying this ridiculously large number of them and you think, I'll never use it. Anytime I peel a beet, if I boil beets or roast beets and I peel them after cooking where the skin just slides off easily, it saves me from having purple hands and purple nails or if I'm peeling beets raw, same thing. Uh, if I am cutting onion and I don't want, or garlic, and I don't want to have to deal with that odor lingering, same thing. You do know, and I've said this before, but we always have new people on. If you have hands that have absorbed and been affected by the juice, from uh, onion or garlic, go over to your stainless steel and rub your hands. You can add some soap, but rub your hands on the stainless steel because when you do that, you'll find that the soap, the, the odor will be gone. I thought, yeah, right, the first time I saw that, and then I found that to be true. At least it is for me, in case you do it and you say, yeah, right, man. At least it is for me. Okay, so I'm pressing a couple of those apple slices in here because I think it gives it kind of a, oh, just a, a really pretty look. And I'm going to bring this to you. I'll get this guy off of here. And it's nice because you just turn them upside down. But I think from COVID, we all learned globology, didn't we? Okay, look guys, da 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 da. Oh, wait, let me get it straight just to make it prettier. And this is going in for 12, 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, all right. And I'm going to set the timer for 35. All right, there we go. That's done. Now we're going to move on to Dr. Dysinger's breakfast. Today's recipe for longevity demonstration or recipes for longevity demonstration came about the theme of it during a conversation we had with Dr. Dysinger in a group accountability meeting and the subject came up of having greens and beans for breakfast and Dr. Dysinger said I eat uh, beans for breakfast every morning my wife does too and we love them and we prefer them. And so we decided that we would do a beans and greens for breakfast. And then I got carried away and I said grains as well. Beans, greens, and grains. Because then I could bring in the whole oatmeal thing. And that allowed me to show Chef AJ's wonderful cake. And in our country, we tend to think of breakfast as a sweet thing. Well that cake will reinforce that belief. But everything else I'm showing you today as it relates to breakfast is savory. I've traveled the world. I think I've gotten to almost 40 countries now. And when in foreign countries on any kind of a tour, you usually have breakfast that is offered as a, a buffet. A lot of the better hotels just have very nice buffets, again, all over the world. And those buffets will offer food of the native country, and then they'll have Western food, meaning American and those who have been influenced by the West. And the Western food, unfortunately, is heavy in saturated fats, heavy in sweets, and in uh, very processed kinds of foods. 
So let's go on. And I'm going to shift you over because we are going to be at the stove for a little bit. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to go next to something else that takes about 20 minutes to cook. We're letting that cook. We're at Dr. Dysinger's African Sweet Potato and Peanut Stew. Got to tell you about this. If you have been with us since we began doing the cooking demonstrations, and I began doing them in, gosh, January, maybe the first was December, but I believe it was Jan December of 18, but I believe it was January of 19. And during the first probably half of 219, we made this stew a similar combination of ingredients as a dinner. So this stew can be made, and if I were you, I would do double or triple the recipe because it, it doubles and triples beautifully and offer it for dinner. For some meals, it can be spooned over a giant smashed baked potato. It can be served over rice. It can be served for breakfast in a bowl. So let's go ahead and begin. The recipe you'll notice calls for a half a teaspoon of oil. And I'm not even going to use that. I, excuse me, a, a teaspoon of oil. I'm not even going to use that for no other reason than my desire to show you that you can eliminate oil completely in a meal. And again, my reasoning behind that, uh, work and talk, uh, my reasoning behind that is that although some oils have some benefits, olive oil, extra virgin, olive oil, I'm Italian, I know olive oil, we almost drink it when I was growing up in terms of how it would be used as a condiment over pasta with a little bit of garlic, gar uh, uh, spaghetti aioli. Uh, uh, but it is not a health food. The same nutrition can be gotten from olives without the 120 calories per tablespoon that doesn't even fill you up. I could eat a pound of broccoli, two pounds of broccoli, not quite, a pound and a half of broccoli for that many calories, and that would fill me up beautifully. Okay, do you hear that? Let me turn my mic. Okay, I heated, now this is called a dry saute. I heated the pan first. Onions, and I won't add garlic this way because garlic will brown very quickly, but I, onions will, and excuse the expression, sweat. They have a certain amount of moisture, a certain amount of sugars in them that create a caramelization. If you're not cooking at too high a heat, I'm a little more than a medium heat because I'm kind of rushing things. And it's, let me see, where are you? Can you see? Yeah. There, I cubed them. I was going to say, don't let me forget to show you how I cubed this because it's another gadget that I'll share with you. But I don't think I can forget because I already have it set up with the next recipe. I needed to cube, no, forget cube. I needed to chop, is it three and a half or four onions for this meal? I also needed to mince nine cloves of garlic. So I thought, I'm not mincing nine cloves of garlic, and the next time I need garlic, I'm going to mince another nine cloves of garlic. I am going to do a whole lot more. So I peel the garlic, and you know that you can just mash a cake a knife, pretend that this is a flat, uh, flat plate of the knife, mash it down on a cutting board, and the skin split. There's another thing I like. You don't have to have this, but I think this is kind of fun. I bought this at some cooking craft fair, and there are raised lines inside. I can put a, a piece of garlic in there and just kind of roll it, and you can hear the skins break away. It's not perfect, but I was able to do 30 
because that's what I'm going to show you how to mince. 30 pieces of garlic. What is that called? Cloves. 30 cloves of garlic using this in just a couple minutes. So now what's happening? Oh, see? Silicone. It protects your hands and yet it can get hot and not create a, a, um, a gas from heat that plastic would. Okay. You're going to see, ow, ow, ow. You're going to see that they are now browning lightly. See that? Now what's going to happen as soon, and they're not sticking. As soon as I add a little bit of broth, it turns into, it, it starts cooking away. It starts evaporating. And I wasn't thinking. I added more than I wanted to. If I were paying better attention, I would have added maybe a tablespoon or so because it would have, it would have sizzled in, in, in a bubbly way and turned brown right away, uh, caramelization. And uh, people do that. The French do it all the time in their cooking where they will deglaze a pan. You take a meat or you take anything off that you're sauteing and you pour in either wine or water or broth and it deglazes it by going brrr, uh, making that bubble, turn, it, pulling off the, the caramelization from the pan. That's all I wanted to do. And that worked. Well, while that is going through its second round, I'll usually do it twice. And what? why would I do that? Because caramelization, if I were patient and had it on much lower and given it time to brown evenly, just kind of quietly, caramelization sweetens, especially onions, and it's quite lovely. Well, this is another product. And again, this isn't inexpensive. This was, I think they, a Tupperware charges $38 for it, but I think they have them on Amazon. I'm not sure why Tupperware had them do that, considering they're consultants, but whatever. This is a clove of garlic already peeled. There are 30 of them in here. And it's called, I can't remember what it's called. It's um, chop, mini chopper, but you, you would see it. It's, it's small. It's their mini chop, worm, chop and worm. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So I have the cover on. 30 cloves of garlic. Can you see this? Yes, you can. Okay, watch. Okay, I'm going to do what I said earlier. I'm going to put just a touch of water. Or I'm going to froth there. Now it's really sizzling, really browning. At this point, the recipe calls for garlic, and I'm going to add it. A couple more words. Maybe shake up a little and another. Okay. Now, this would have taken me quite a bit of time to chop. I'm going to get this off the cover. And the cover separates so that when you're cleaning it, if moisture gets in, you can dry it out easily. And I'm going to put that a little lower. Take a look at that. I have chopped garlic. And the recipe here calls, I love it that Dr. Dyson and his wife really appreciate garlic. Why would I like that? Because garlic is, it has, it's, it's an allium, allium meaning from the onion family. This calls for an entire tablespoon. And what I have found is when I mince garlic, I've measured this out, one teaspoon is one clove of garlic, one average clove of garlic. So if I've got a tablespoon here, I have, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, three tablespoons uh, I mean, one tablespoon of garlic would be three teaspoons. The reason I said I'm sorry is the last time that we did class, I the, the class was videoed, and I watched some of it, and I was yelling at myself. You guys are so patient because, see, I did it again, because that's what I was doing throughout the entire class. Wham, 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 wham on the side of... Of, of everything and I was going to say kick me if I do that again but you can't I'm protected here <laughs> anyway uh, 
that is not what I want to do all class long. So I'm, I'm going to try to be aware. All right. So this is beautiful. It is ouch. Okay. I like this pan. I like the shape, but I would have preferred to have a, a handle set didn't heat. But you can see that it's, it's browned. Uh, but not burnt at all. And I only did the garlic for moments because when garlic browns, as opposed to onion, where if it browns, it's not the best, or deeply browns. But garlic, if it deeply browns, becomes bitter. And we don't want that. We like a roasted flavor of garlic, but we don't want it to become bitter. So we've got that ready. The onion is what we call translucent. If you ever hear that in a recipe, that's exactly what's happened. It's it's turned from an opaque white uh, to this lovely kind of almost see-through. All right, now we're going to add the sweet potato. And I had a sweet potato a little smaller than this one. And the sweet potato adds so much flavor to it. I used my chopper for that, and I'll show you how to do that, and again, why, because I had a lot of chopping uh, for this menu. And what I like about it is look at the pretty <laughs> pretty little cubes. Uh, when the dish is finished, it has, I think, a lovely look, a sort of consistency. Now, some of you may think that's ridiculous. It looks so much better to have sort of a small, some small pieces and large pieces, it gives it that country look. And I agree with that. But then I also have pieces that cook less thoroughly and cook more thoroughly. So that's part of it as well. I also am adding the broth, but you're going to see what I'm going to do in a minute. I well, okay. If this is a breakfast, maybe I shouldn't amend it. What I was going to say is I like this general menu as a soup into which I put spinach. With this amount of broth, this is much more like a stew. And the last time I made it, I put more broth in, so I had more of a soup than a stew. But maybe I'll just leave it. And let's just leave it just the way Dr. Dysinger has it, because perhaps that's exactly how, well, obviously, there's no perhaps involved. Obviously, he likes the idea of eating it in a bowl as a beanie soup. I mean, as a beanie stew without the broth. Broth for dinner, uh, soup for dinner, and just a bean dish, a bean sweet potato dish for dinner. I mean, for breakfast. Okay, now this, to me, is the piece de resistance. It's peanut butter. Ooh. You're adding fat to this. This is organic peanuts because things that grow in the ground with our agricultural system adding all kinds of fake stuff to grow things and spraying them with things that don't belong in our body, I don't feel real good about. So just about everything I get, I aim for organic because then those things cannot be used. Some things can be used that aren't ideal, but not, not willy-nilly anything that uh, they feel like adding. Uh, I'm adding to it now the chili powder. Oh, recipe calls for New Mexico chili powder. I didn't have that. I don't even know where to get it, but that was part of the recipe. It's probably one of Dr. Dysinger's favorite, favorite spices. So instead, I used one, it called for two teaspoons. Instead, I used one teaspoon of chili powder and one teaspoon of ancho chili powder, which I happen to have. And ancho chilies are a smoky chili. So I sort of created my own smokiness. And I'm adding a half a teaspoon of salt. It was part of the menu or part of the recipe, and, and I'm going to go ahead and add it. Now... What I'm going to do is cover it. Let's see, stir well, peanut butter mixed well, no clumps, simmer uncovered. Yes, definitely. He means for this to be a stewy in a bowl, eat this lovely combination of ingredients breakfast. Okay, I will honor that. 
So that's done. We're going to let it cook, simmer gently for 20 minutes. Okay, move that out of the way. And you're going to see that the garbanzo beans and the spinach go in at the last minute. It's actually kale that he calls for, but I ended up without, I thought I had plenty of kale. It's going to go into Chef AJ's breakfast greens because it has such substance that it's needed to go with those mushrooms and spinach or kale can be used for this dish. And if Dr. Dysinger is watching, he's saying, no, it can't. I called for kale. So Use kale if you've got chopped kale, but spinach works too. Okay. Now, we're going to go to the next. Let me see. All right. We're going to go to the next breakfast of Dr. Dysinger's. And I'm going to move this out of the way. And we'll let this simmer. And let me get another pan. And this is Dr. Dysinger's breakfast beans. He calls them spicy English or Dr. D's breakfast beans, spicy English style. Okay. This also had kale. I'm using the um, spinach for that because I didn't have enough kale as well. All right. All right, here we go. So if you look at this recipe, his English style beans, and I'll keep an eye on this 20 minutes. Okay, we'll be fine. All right. Hold on to the, oh, let me think. No, we're fine. We're going to do the same thing. I'm heating this pan. The pan that I used for the peanut, the, the South African peanut stew is all clad. It's stainless steel with a thick base. It's clad in very heat transferable or transferring metals. And it's sandwiched and it's uh, stainless steel inside and, I mean, outside and surrounding whatever other metal is in the core. This is a pan that I just love. And it's, it's by a brand called Scan Pan. They are Danish. They're very pricey, but the whole point, you don't have to use this brand, is that they are a great substitute for Teflon, which is highly toxic, dangerous. It'll even kill birds in your home if you heat it up and the fumes hit the birds. It's the canary in the coal mine idea that you're poisoning your lungs, but the bird dies first. So don't use Teflon, throw away your old Teflon. But the new titanium enamel pans, and that's what this is, are coated in such a way and treated in such a way that they're very hardy and that they you can trust them with your health. And I like this Danish brand. It's the one that I use for, and you're gonna see it in the next recipe, for Chef AJ's spinach and kale, her breakfast. I use it for that as well. So I put my hand over here to see how hot it is. I want those onions to hit the pan and immediately caramelize. Okay, and let's see, mm. get a little bit hotter. We're doing the same thing. I'm caramelizing the onions. I'm glad to see that Dr. Dysing and, her, and his family are very comfortable eating onions because, let me grab this, another one, because as I was saying, the onions are an allium. Allianase is part of the one of the benefits of eating onions. And it is very good. It's a great component for uh, nitric oxide transfer and 
to the health of your cardiovascular system, your blood vessels. So you want garlic, you want onions, you want leeks, shallots, green onion, and you want them raw and cooked because when you cook them, it reduces the amount of the enzyme, but you get other benefits from the onion and the, the allium uh, uh, vegetable. On the other hand, and it's partially sulfur and some other things. On the other hand, raw will give you the most of that, that part of the nutrition. And so if any of you have become familiar with Joel Furman, and I do recommend his book, Eat to Live. He is one of the first to talk about the value of eating nutritiously on purpose, aiming for foods that feed your body beautifully. And he has the G-bombs that are his acronym for those foods. And they are greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds and nuts. And they will give you everything you need as a combination for a healthy diet. So see, the same thing is happening here. This is non-stick, and so I'm not getting quite the, I'll call it the browning, but you can't see it anyway because the pan is darker. Okay, I'm going to use, I'm, excuse me as I walk off the camera for just a second. This is my broth. I keep a one gallon baggie in the freezer at all times as I, well, for example, when I peeled this sweet potato after I washed it carefully, not this one, but that one, as I washed it, after I washed it carefully, I put the peel in my baggie along with carrot bottoms and carrot peels and onion peel, but not the really crispy paper because that and, and garlic paper as I call it skins because they can be a little bit um, bitter they can make it bitter but when that gets filled I make broth so the broth is, is really free and a lot of you know this and a lot of you are doing the same thing and you've possibly been doing it for years but you have this wonderful lovely homemade broth that you always have on hand I bought the bottles probably on Amazon I like the way it looks and see I just put the smallest amount of broth in here and you can see how I'm getting that beautiful caramelization again and what that's going to do if I didn't do any of that if I simply put let's say I wanted to make it so fast that I'm, I didn't want any trouble uh, any um, involvement just mix the onion with all the other ingredients and called it a day the Food would be, certainly be palatable, but by the same token, oh good, now I've got my cooking going over here. It would certainly be palatable, but it wouldn't be have the depth of flavor that I'm creating here. All right, now this also calls for garlic, and this one calls for a tablespoon of garlic as well. Wow, they love their garlic, good for them. And what did I do? Well, nobody is looking, right? <laughs> I'm not going to measure. This looks a lot like a tablespoon. Oh, and for those of you wondering what this is, it's a three-blade contraption that sits and is pulled by the string to chop at three levels all those 30 cloves. Now, what's going to happen with this... Um, I have a container. I wanted to show you, and I put it out for you, but I don't know. Oh, here it is. Sorry to walk off camera like that. It's a cute little jar I got somewhere, and I keep this chopped onion in this jar, and I will use it for a week or two without having to mince onion again. And Joel Furman, if you've listened to him, will say to you, it's a good idea to chop garlic a little bit before you use it or simply before you use it because it will release some of the enzyme that uh, that utilizes it while within 30 to 40 minutes of having chopped it. Okay, 
So I'm adding black pepper to this. I'm adding the tiniest touch of cayenne. And again, I thought I brought my spoon, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pour because boy, if you get more, too much cayenne, you can't eat it. All right, a little bit more broth. All right, and now I'm going to add the tomato. This is one chopped fresh tomato that I got from the farm store. It's a lovely tomato. And this is a fast recipe because this doesn't have to cook any length of time. It's basically cooked as soon as we mix it. But you're going to see that I'm going to cook it just a little bit to blend it. And so we have our garlic. We have our seasoning. And what I'm going to add to it. Is the beans. Let's see what it says. Okay, as the recipe says, cook the tomato until pieces are broken down. If you cook a lot, you know what we're talking about. If you don't, you look at that and say, I don't really know what that means. But you'll see when you experience this that the tomato, I'll call it disintegrates somewhat. That's being broken down. Okay. It, its juices become thicker. Oops, don't do that, man. Okay, now I'm going to add, this is two cans of cannellini beans. Do you know what cannellini beans are? They're white kidney beans. And you can get these at Trader Joe's Organic for 99 cents a can. So this is, when people say, oh, I can't go whole food plant-based, it's too expensive. It is not. This is three cups because each cup drained and rinsed, and you rinse to get off a couple of things. You rinse because if you're, if you're sensitive to beans, there's an oligosaccharide. That are that is in the juice of beans, in in beans too, but in the cooking broth as well. You're rinsing that off, but you're also rinsing off the salt if you don't buy low sodium beans, or if you buy beans with no sodium. I still would rinse off the juice. You know, I say that, and yet when you see these garbanzo beans that I'm putting in that stew. They came out of my freezer, and this is what I do. I'll, in my Instant Pot, cook two pounds of soaked garbanzos. Soak them for 15, 20 hours. You start one day, you cook it later the next day, and put them in the Instant Pot with some onion, garlic, bay leaf. Oh, I use juniper berries. Some of you will say, what? Don't worry about the juniper berries. I... I, it's just a, a seasoning that I like the intensity of. And cook it for 18 to 19 minutes, if you soak them well, in the Instant Pot. And you end up with a huge pot. You can drain out the broth. And the reason I'm even talking about this is I'm talking about oligosaccharides. Obviously, I don't care that much because I drain the broth and it is, oh, and one piece of kombu. Kombu is a Japanese sea vegetable that helps relieve the gas producing element in beans. Uh, so I cook my beans with a slice of kombu. So take all of that out. But the broth is then so flavorful that I was going to throw it away and I taste it. I thought I can't do it. It's just too good. So I Googled a recipe for using, it's called aqua fava, the, the, uh, the water from uh, beans, and especially garbanzo beans. And I came up with a soup, a spinach garbanzo bean soup that uses aqua fava, and it was delicious. And if we were gassier than normal, I don't know. Uh, it didn't bother me enough not to do it again. So I froze 
all of the broth, the just bean broth on that. And I'll make, or in my, gosh, I got a huge tray. I lay them out on in, in what you call a jelly roll pan. It's a cookie sheet that has the sides, you know, little sides to cool them out and then put them into one quart freezer Ziploc bags, put them in the freezer. And when you're about to use them, you just kind of hit them against something. The beans just break apart because they've already been uh, drained well. And that's how I got these. I just scooped them out of my bag. So these were home cooked organic. I always buy organic uh, garbanzo beans. And pretty soon I'll be adding them to Dr. Geisinger's beautiful stew. I'm so glad I didn't add more broth to this because this will give you a really good feel for what he's going to be eating maybe tomorrow morning. Okay, so we're pretty well done here. I'm going to add to it and then I'm just going to let it sit. I'm going to add to it one cup of chopped spinach and it could have been one cup of chopped kale. And I'm going to leave my garlic out because when we get to AJ's breakfast greens, she has four cloves of garlic. That's a tablespoon and some that she adds to her greens. If you don't like garlic, if it doesn't serve you well, it, it, it maybe isn't your favorite flavor, then don't you. Oops, don't do that, ma'am. Then don't do it. But um, it's, it's healthy. It's healthy as our onions, as are those green. Look what I have here. Green, sliced green onions I'll throw on at the end before I serve it. All of those are so good for you. Okay, now we're going to move on to AJ's recipe. Let me see how the cake is doing. We have 40... I, 43 seconds left on the cake and you get to look at it. All right. I'm going to show you this. Look how pretty this is, everyone. Imagine waking up, having whatever you start your day with. I hope you, you start your day with a big, at least 14 to 16 ounce glass of nice filtered water, if you can filter it. And... You take a bowl of this, maybe have some wedges of orange. Orange is better than orange juice. And look at that. Look how pretty. Not beautiful. So I have... Oh, that's funny. The This oven has a timer that has a ridiculous sound. I don't know if you can hear it. It's right there. It's it's almost impossible to hear, and yet that's an oven timer. I don't get that, but or maybe you hear it very loudly and you're thinking, "Wow, she is getting old. <laughs> she can't hear anymore." Okay, we're getting our meal thrown together here. Now we're going to do Chef AJ's greens and beans. I'm stirring Dr. Dysinger's stew. We'll put on Chef AJ's pan and I'm gonna heat it and then I'll get the cake out of the oven. Okay, this is another scan pan. Excuse me while I step aside. And this is what I wanted to show you, this little tool. And a number of you have seen me use it before. Okay. So this is Chef AJ's <laughs> lip smacking, mouth watering kale. And I couldn't use spinach if that's what it says it is. So she's the one that won out and got the kale that I had, um, thinking I had more. I did the shopping for this class before I left to watch the grandkids because I knew I was getting home just in time for 
uh, to get the morning group done, our resil or our um, accountability group, and then be able to start class preparations. Okay, this heats up very fast. This is another one of the scan pans. And let me show you, well, this is heating. Oh, no, I can't do that. I'm going to walk you over. I'm going to have to readjust things. Okay. All right. Oh, my goodness. Cancel. Cancel this imperceptible um, timer. And I'm pulling the cake out. Putting it on a wire wrap. Why a wire wrap? Well, because if it's on something that doesn't let the air circulate underneath, it stays hot too long. All right. Oh, people. You know what I should do? I should show you what to do just in case. Take a knife, stick it in the middle to be sure that it's set. Absolutely. Yep, it's dry as opposed to it coming out the knife with moisture on it. That would be a problem. All right. Hot, hot, hot. Goodbye. Look, 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 look. Isn't that just beautiful? All right. We'll let that sit here. And Chef AJ's is going to be the last thing that will be presented or prepared. And it doesn't take long. So what I'm going to do, oops, get me back to you. Are you back to me? Okay. I'm going to throw the garbanzo beans into the stew. And I chopped up, pre-chopped two cups of spinach, but I'm going to wait until the very end to toss that in. The garbanzos will take a little bit of time to warm up. You know what? I'm going to lift this up to show you because this is just too pretty not to. Look. And I'll see if I can do that without pouring it on. Oh, you can't see. Ah, 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 ah. There. Look. Isn't that beautiful? And when we get the green of the spinach in there. Oh, my goodness. Will this be pretty? Okay. So I just have it on warm now. And when we add the spinach to it, we'll serve it within moments because that's when it's, it's absolute best. So what is this thing about this whole chopping thing I'm talking about? Okay. I had a number of things to chop up. I had the sweet potato to chop up. I had, well, the garlic, massive amounts of garlic to chop it. You saw what my decision as far as what I was going to do about that was. But now let me show you, uh, what I do with the onion and grab a knife. So this is called the Vidalia Chop Wizard. Uh, I think it's still maybe, well, I was going to say it's $20 on Amazon, but I got the one. I have to step away again. Sorry. I got the one that was a few dollars more because it had, well, the fine chopper that actually the, the, the less expensive one has, but it also had this one, which I like a lot for mushrooms. Put two mushrooms on there, sometimes three, whack, and you have chopped mushrooms. They're this size, you can't do thicker, or I don't think you'd wanna do thinner, but I, that's, that's handy. And it also came with this nice little tool. The other one doesn't that allows you <laughs> to throw your garbage on the floor, that allows you to pull the debris out of this, this uh, device here that, that 
kind of holds the food down when you're chopping. So let me show you what I mean. This already has chopped onion in it. And you can see that there's two and a half cups of chopped onion. This is the three cup mark. That's two and a half. So I don't need any more than a half of a cup. When you use this, in case you buy it and you haven't read the instructions before you use it the first time, instead of cutting the onion this way, the way we would usually slice, we're cutting it down through its, would we call that an axis, top to bottom? And I'm just going to cut half of this small onion because an onion this size will probably chop up to about a cup. I only need a half a cup more. Can you see me? Yes, you can. I put it, well, let me disperse what's in there so that it doesn't keep it from going down. I take that little slice, put it on, and whack. Do the same again, and whack. Take this onion, put it back in the refrigerator, and take this device apart, take this apart, Take these little pieces and I'll get them out of the way and washed. And what I have is evenly chopped onion almost instantly. And it's not a bad idea to always have more than you want chopped. For example, that green onion at the farm store, I buy several bunches of green onion, chop them, put them in a container because my husband and I know that it's very healthy to have chopped cilantro, chopped parsley, chopped onion, raw, um, chopped basil on our food because the nutritional value of herbs is even higher than on fresh vegetables because it's concentrated. That's the whole point of the herbs. Okay, so I've already heated this. You're going to hear a sizzle and... Oh, I'll use this. There's no reason, oh, sorry, that I shouldn't use this. All right. I'm going to, now, if you look at Chef AJ's, uh, her recipe, it's really quite dramatic because there are 10 ounces of onions. How much is that? About three cups. This is, let's see if this is, well, I may not use all of it, but yes, well, eh. Maybe not all of it. Okay. And may I say something about recipes? Please ignore them or parts of them at will. We could have added curry to this African stew. We could have added turmeric and ginger, fresh ginger and cardamom pods that we could then pick out later or, cha uh, or ground cardamom. Uh, there's so much you can do with any recipe based on your particular taste. So this recipe, when I made it, because I've already done the greens, my husband, who is crazy about vegetables, wasn't crazy about the balance of kale to mushroom. He's a mushroom, and so am I, a mushroom fanatic. We'll slice and saute, dry saute with a shallot or leek or onion and lots of garlic, an entire pound of mushrooms. And we'll eat it over mashed potato, which is a pound and a half of potato boiled with a pound of broken up cauliflower put in, drain out the liquid, hold a little bit of it, and mash it. And to that, add a half a cup of cauliflower with maybe a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of that hot liquid that you blend in your blender. It turns into kind of like a cream, but it's, um, it's cashew nut. Did I say cashew nut? I don't remember what I said. So you've got cashew nut, a half cup to three quarters of a cup of hot broth from the combination that was drained after boiled to tenderness of cauliflower and potato. I hope you're writing. And that is mashed potatoes. But you wouldn't know there's cauliflower in there. Kids who hate vegetables wouldn't know. I serve that for meals when we have company. They don't know. And over that, we will we will spoon an entire pound of sliced mushrooms 
and have some steamed, uh, not steamed asparagus, but maybe roasted asparagus or steamed zucchini. And that's our meal. And it's fabulous. We're getting protein from the vegetables and greens that we've had during the day. You could, could add beans to that. And we're getting them from the, the um, cashew nuts. Okay, same thing. It's browning. It's looking great. I'm going to add to that in just a couple of minutes, the garlic, and then I'm going to cook down the, mush the mushrooms. If I were making this for myself, I would have added more mushrooms. Uh, I think we used a pound when I made it the first time, and I would add less kale just because he likes more of the mushroom flavor than the kale flavor. So in other words, play. Do your own thing. This is such a beautiful breakfast meal, but it's it's an any time of the day meal. We had leftovers, and I make a designer salad every day for lunch. This marvelous combination over chopped lettuce of anything we have in the refrigerator, and it's always very bright and very vibrant and quite colorful and just delicious. Oh, and I use Chef AJ's. Uh, house dressing on it and if you were at class last time you have that recipe and if not somehow get a hold of me um, sorry I thought I could just rip this but I, I don't see any place that's giving me the opportunity to do that let me try this there okay there had to be somewhere and but that house dressing over a salad with this cold mushroom kale mound on the greens and then some carrot and almond salad as part of the greens and um, some heated um, beans, the, the English beans on top of that, you know, all segmented as if they were in a color wheel. Fabulous meal. So that's what happens when you make large amounts of something like this. How are we doing with time? We are just about done, people. Okay, so I'm sauteing the mushrooms now. And you know what happens when you saute mushrooms. They release a lot of juice. So I'm going to do this with a higher flame so as not to burn the onions, but so as to evaporate some of the mushroom juice, but not so much that I don't have enough moisture for the kale. Did I put the, oh, I think I forgot the, no, I didn't. I did do the garlic, good, okay. If there are any questions, Marissa or Angie, whoever is on, I would be very happy to take some questions. And I'm so sorry, I can't see your news, your, your comment feed. I wish there was some way for me to get that after a class because it would be really valuable to me to know what you're saying and what's happening out there. How many people are we up to now? Somebody can tell me and I'll maybe see it flash by. And again, welcome, welcome Zel uh, Goski people. We had one of our patients today talk about a group that somebody on. Yeah, Nan. Um, so we just want to confirm the farm store that you are referring to is the Corona farm, right? Thank you very much. Yes. I'm sorry. I shouldn't assume anything. It's the Corona family farm store on it's a, basically a big tent on Magno. It's open all the time. And by all the time, I mean every day. It's um, on Madison near, well, at the corner of, but on Madison, there's an entrance of Victoria and Madison. They have, they don't offer the same produce the next day. What they pick, they'll be out in the field picking what you're going to be buying in some cases. And so we go there every Sunday with our own bags, because I don't like wasting the, the plastic. We get our fresh picked tomatoes. 
They even have still some strawberries out there, and they'll run out and put some strawberries sometimes. If you get there at the right time, you could get that. They had antelope that they had growing in their fields, and then they have everything. They have, gosh, spinach and arugula and two kinds of kale and basil and mint. Again, all depending on what's coming up in their field and nice and fresh. Can you see this? Do you see what's happening here? Look at that. And if you love mushrooms, you would be going crazy now. I wish you weren't there and I'd be tasting. That's not true. I don't wish you're not there. But <laughs> there ain't no way that I wouldn't be tasting or that Tim wouldn't be in here grabbing pieces of mushroom out. And I fighting for him to leave them alone. Um, okay. And then I'm going to add the kale and steam it down a little bit and we will with our eyes. Uh, Marissa, any other questions? Not at the moment. We do have 30 attendees right now. We did at one time have 38. Some people had okay. to sign off and did yep. say thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. So glad you're all here. That's just so lovely. Did AJ make it on by any chance? Well, actually, you wouldn't know, and we shouldn't know. So never mind. I'm not spotting on you guys. <laughs> I don't see that name, though. It's up for menus. <laughs> he just came out with a new book, Own Your Health. It just came out on Amazon. She'd love you to get it before the 18th of October. She wrote it with uh, the fellow that she has written her other two books with. And it looks like I, I got it. It came in while I was away with my grandkids. And so I, I haven't had a chance to read it, but it looks wonderful. I was listening to her interview him on a podcast, the gentleman that whose book is, uh, or whose name is also on the book. Uh, she was interviewing him and he was saying that he would like to believe that this book will be the last, the, uh, see, I'm paraphrasing and I'll, I'll get it wrong. That this book would allow for people to finally embrace the idea that whole food plant-based is absolutely the healthiest way to eat on the planet. And I believe it is. And he believes that he has, and he's a, he's a comedian as well as a environmentalist, as well as a, um, a vegan for, I want to say the last 17 years. And as he, so he has, and they have 75 recipes uh, from AJ and several of the contributing experts, uh, health experts sharing their recipes, people that she has come to know for a long time. Well, if and I don't think I finished this sentence, and I'm not telling tales out of school because she said it in this podcast with him that Dr. Dysonler is her lifestyle medicine doctor. So we have not only the her expertise in offering to uh, interview lifestyle medicine or lifestyle medical and she will be interviewing dr dysinger it was december 30th and they were looking at a way to make it sooner and i'm not sure if that's happened but uh it's it's very nice to it's such an honor for her to have chosen our practice and, can you can yeah. you repeat the name of the book again and yeah. the author your health own your health on amazon just came out I want to say last Wednesday, and it is, and what happens with Amazon is that there are, um, there are, oh, how am I trying to say it? You know what? I can put, I didn't use all the kale. I am going to put it in Dr. Dysinger's instead of the spinach. There are designations with Amazon like top, top seller or, um, top rated or, you know, woohoo, look at this. And it has to do with how quickly after publication the book is purchased. So 
I like the idea of giving her the best chance that she can have of that designation, even though I believe that it's possible they're already there. But that's my two cents on it. Okay, so this is this is cooking. I'm going to move this over so you can see it now. Can you see it? Yes, you can. Okay, but I'll tilt it for you. Let me get these out of the way. All right. And I'm stirring in the kale. You know, spinach and kale are loaded with calcium. When people say, ah, drink your milk, then you'll have strong bones. They have shown that countries with the highest consumption of dairy have the highest incidences of osteoporosis and countries with little or no dairy, like the Asian countries where they are by genetic favorability or unfavorability, any way you want to look at it, uh, they don't drink dairy and they have the strongest bones. Part of that is that soy helps with that. But in other words, we get calcium from our greens, not just from uh, dairy. As a matter of fact, I think we get it much more favorably from our greens. But do remember that when you have your greens, especially raw, like spinach, that you have a citrus-based dressing and you have, or some lemon juice or some citric acid, um, acetic acid, uh, for example, from balsamic vinegar on your salad because it helps break down the calcium in the, the spinach. It's a little more um, easily assimilated, oh, you guys, from the kale. But they're both it's, both, it's helpful for both of them when we do that. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but this is so gorgeous. So I'm going to lay it out. And show you what we have here. Okay. I'm going to switch you over in just a minute. Here. And let's see if I can get you properly centered and lowered. Okay, people. So what we have here is our breakfast beans. And... You may say, Nan, don't do it. You're going to be breathing onion all over people. But I'm going to put some raw onion on Dr. Deisinger's English, spicy English breakfast beans. Why were they spicy? Well, there was uh, black pepper, a lot of it. It was 23 grinds for my fresh pepper meal, the pepper meal that produces fresh pepper, in order to get a teaspoon. And so that's, that's a lot of pepper. And maybe I'll move this out of the way a little. All right. So we have the beans. We have the greens. We have our apple cake. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. Oh, I know what we're missing. Hold on. have to get a trivet. I thought I had enough trivets and I didn't. Ow, 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 ow. Okay. All right. Then we have our apple cake. This is the one I made last week. Oh, there you are. It has been refrigerated. Now I'll tell you what I did with it that made it so useful. I went to take care of grandkids, and I brought with me my oat groats. I think you are familiar with my oat groats. Sorry, people, but I'd rather show you than not show you in not feel constrained to the camera in that way. This is oat groats. Cook them in the instant pot. Two cups 
of oat groats, three cups boiling water, cook five minutes, and then let it sit after it's come to pressure and cooked five minutes and turned itself off just to, to warm, let it sit for two hours. I like them better than rice. And so the oat groats go into a bowl. I took a bit of the apple cake, maybe a one inch slice, mashed it in the bowl with the oat groats. That gave me some um, a, a very moist apple-y flavor. Otherwise it was just oat groats, which is like having rice. Had some um, almond milk. It could be soy, because soy has nine grams of protein per cup. Almond milk only has one, but it depends on what what you prefer. I'm going to put a little bit of onion on AJ's and then I'm going to put some cilantro on our stew. Okay. All right. And then I put it in the microwave and just let it bubble bubble of uh, on I use half power and had that with some nuts and some berry and banana over it for a breakfast. People, it was fabulous. And that was that was breakfast, and I could bring it with me in the form of the, uh, the apple cake. And let me show you what this looks like when it's plated. So this would be, this might be too big a bowl for most breakfast, but here, there's Dr. Dysinger and his wife's, I believe her name is Elaine. Oh, shoot. Is it? That's the breakfast. Here. Heather. Now, then they have some mushroom and kale and beans. And if they wanted, I don't think they're going to do all this for breakfast, but if they wanted, they could then have some beautiful apple cake. Ta-da! It's done. There's your breakfast or your options. Or, as I said earlier, I think I need to move it there. Uh, as I said before, actually, let's add a little fruit to them. There we go. Uh, all of this could be eaten at any meal, any time. And again, there's our beautiful cake. Let it cool. We're going to recuperate it. Marissa, I'll bring you some of the cake tomorrow to taste. Okay, awesome. people. Thank you. So I'm going to. Man, man real quick, can you, um, for the oat groats, we just want to make sure it's two cups of groats to oh. three cups of water? Uh, yes. Let me, let, what do I do here? Let's see. I'll just go down and talk to you. I can't. I'm going to pull this up. There you go, right there. I can, I can get in and talk to you. Okay. So use your Instant Pot. I've done this in the six cup and I've done quart and I've done it in the eight quart. And I buy my oat groats organic and I get them bulk. And I rinse off because I rinse all grains first. I rinse off two cups of oat groats, put it in the Instant Pot. I put a half a teaspoon of salt. You may not. Uh, three cups of boiling water. Set it to five minutes. And that's on high pressure. But usually your pot just goes right to high pressure. And when it hits five minutes and it beeps that it's finished, it starts counting backwards. I just, I just ignore it. I do this first thing in the morning before we take our walk. I can eat two hours later, which is usually what happens about 8.30 would be my breakfast. And I have hot oat groats for breakfast, but I don't need them like that. I cool them out on a plate so that they cool off, put them in Tupperware containers. My husband had a Thai, a green Thai curry vegetable stir fry for dinner. And he had the oat groats instead of rice with that and some grapes. Um, and some raw vegetables, and that was a great meal for him. And these will be used all through the week as a grain. And they're five, five grams of protein per cup. Cook, go ahead. 
Did you so have if someone doesn't have an Instapot, how long would it take to cook? Okay. Then Google cooking oat groats because then they need to be soaked. You soak them, and I've not cooked them that way. But I do know that you, and, and you don't have to have an instant pot to live. I just find that it's so convenient. But then you would soak it. And, and if you lived up in the mountains somewhere and you had oat groats because they're the right thing to do, you wouldn't know anything about an instant pot. By mountain, I'm just, I'm picturing, you know, backwoods somewhere. Uh, and you do it the old fashioned way. You soak them overnight. You'd put them in a pan. And I think it's cooking about 40 minutes, something like 40, 45 minutes. And the thing I don't know is the quantity of water, because sometimes with grains, they will give you a quantity of water that gives you a porridge. And with this, I don't want a porridge. I want independent grains, the way I do with quinoa and um, millet. I don't want a porridge. And so in that way, you would, you would maybe look for a recipe, Google for a recipe that will give you um, dry, not dry grains, but in other words, loose, independent grains. And, and I'm not saying this very well, but you can find things like that on Google. Um, best, um, best, uh, why can't I think of the word? I can only think of the word independent and that's silly. Anyway, best grains. Oh, I'm not saying it right, but I think you know what I mean. Um, because there is a difference. Otherwise, you'll get a recipe. And I did the same thing with millet. I wanted millet in that was loose and grainy. And I had a recipe. And the same thing with buckwheat. That just gave me a porridge. And that wasn't at all what I wanted to do. So, anyway. And also, I just, just to um, let everyone know, uh, those of you that are part of the LMS uh, patient panels already, um, every quarter we are raffling off a basket for patients that refer patients to us. Um, and if you have referred a patient, you can put your name in the basket. We're based, the baskets are based on our four pillars, which nutrition is one of our pillars. And this, this basket that's on this quarter, it's actually resilience, but the next quarter it's going to be nutrition. And I believe the Instapot's going to be one of the Yay. things. That's gonna be <laughs> Yay. Yay. I'll tell you one thing. Chef AJ, who has been around the block in terms of who she knows and the influence she has and the people who have influenced her, and she is convinced that the only way to go forward with health is to have in your on your team, in your um, your your group of health professionals, a lifestyle medicine doctor, because most physicians. And it's not because they are bad people. It's just the way they're trained. If you have anything, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, prediabetes, diabetes, uh, kidney problems, they will medicate. And they will medicate without looking for the cause or mitigating the cause with food. Only a lifestyle medicine doctor will take the time to talk to you about your food and your sleep and your exercise and your community and help you get past those things so you can get off medicine. And... As we get older, at least that's how I feel. I'll be in, in, it's hard for me to believe, less than three months, I'll be 70. And I would be on all kinds of medicine because it all started in the 60s when the numbers, well, actually 66, uh, the numbers started going downhill. And I said, no, no, no to all that and said, I'll fix it with food. But not until I came all the way around to a whole food plant-based diet did things change dramatically. So that's why my fervor. <laughs> Anything else, anyone? I, it's getting late, so I don't want to hold you. We're finished. No, everybody just wants to thank you and let you know that your demonstration um, really brings the recipes to life, and they appreciate you doing this. Thank you. I love it. And I'll see you next time, next second Tuesday of the month in um, November. We'll do some holidays. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.